Hola, me llamo Rowana. I'm going to read Chapter 8 of Stella Diaz Never Gives Up. In comparison to the airport, Tia Maria's home feels quiet and peaceful. It's also very different from our place in Chicago. Maria's house stands by itself on a big piece of land surrounded by mountains and it's painted red. Our place is brick and only a few feet from our neighbors. Her house looks like an old hacienda and ours is just a house. I touch the walls of our home with my hands. It doesn't feel like brick. It's made of adobe, Maria says. What's that, I ask. Adobe is a house made out of mud and other natural materials. When it dries, it's strong as brick, she says. It helps the house stay naturally cooler in the summer. People have been making houses this way for thousands of years. My mouth drops. Let's drop off your maletas and then I'll take you around. After we leave off our bags in the big guest room, Maria takes us on a tour of her home. The walls are covered with pictures of her from her adventures. Each picture is more impressive than the next. This is at the United Nations, she points at one picture, when I was on a women's rights committee. I'm not quite sure what the United Nations is, but it sounds awfully important, especially anything related to women's rights. I learned in Miss Bell's class that women have al haven't always had the same rights as men. The fact that Maria was on a committee for them, for them means she must be a special person. Amazing, I reply. It's important to me to make sure that you and all women have the opportunity to be and do whatever you want, she says, looking at me with her bright green eyes. Then I see a framed picture of Maria sitting on some rocks next to the beach. She looks much younger, but there's the same sparkle in her eyes. And this picture is from Barcelona when I was teaching at the university out there. Wow, I reply, it's all, it's all I can say. She must be super smart too. She's like my own personal Sylvia Earl. I hope you brought your swimsuit, she winks. We'll go to the beach on, in a day or two. I nod enthusiastically. Then I run up to mom and squeeze her hand. I'm excited too, she says, taking the words out of my mouth. And I'm hungry, Nick adds. Maria takes us into the historic part of Oaxaca City for dinner. It's easy to tell that it's old because the streets are cobbled. The buildings are also brightly painted red, orange, and yellow. The plazas are filled with plants and artesanos selling their crafts. As we pass other people on the street, I notice many of their faces look like mine. It makes me more than ever want to fit in. This makes me more than ever want to fit in, like I belong in the place where I was born. So when I find a postcard for Stanley, I ask mom if I can buy it myself. Mom gives me the charge, the change, so I can pay the vendor 10 pesos. We don't say much, but I make sure to start with hola and end with muchas gracias to which he replies, De nada, senorita. I skip back to mom, who gives me a thumbs up. A tiny step in the right direction, I think. Then we continue on our walk. Maria leads us through the doorway to a secret restaurant. Well, it's not really a secret, but it's hidden from the streets. You have to go between two stores into a beautiful courtyard to find the restaurant. It's called Las Danzantes, Maria says. Does that mean the dancers, asks Nick. Yes, very good, Nicholas, says Maria. Weird, I think. This is the third time this summer I've heard him called Nicholas. I wonder if I can still call him Nick. My stomach rumbles and I focus on the more pressing issue, dinner. As I look at the menu, I think I can understand half of the words, like postre, which means dessert. Yes, por favor. Verduras is mostly good. I like most vegetables, although not eggplant, ew. Can we try the chapulines? I asked Maria, pointing to the menu. She looks impressed. Of course. They're they're a delicacy. Then she says, if you eat them, you can be a true Mexicana. I quickly realize that it doesn't matter what's on the menu. Because of Maria, we're being treated like special guests. Maria has been living in Oaxaca, Oaxaca for most of her adult life and knows everyone. The owner even comes out to say hello to us. He hugs and kisses her and says a few things I can understand. My eyes start to glaze over. Finally, he looks at me and says more slowly, Tu tía es una mujer. Muy importante. You must take after me, Mom says to Maria, winking. If the owner of a restaurant says Maria is very important, then she really must be. I think about the amazing women in my family. Hopefully I can grow up to be like them one day. As requested, we get an order of cha 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 chapulines when I see them. I'm immediately not a fan. Neither is Nick. Grasshoppers, we exclaim. No, say preocupes, niños. Let me show you. 
Maria scoops a few into a corn tortilla and adds avocado and pickled onions. She hands it to me. I grab it hesitantly from her. I stare for a few seconds. I can hear Maria's and Dad's voices echoing in my head. How they're a delicacy and how a true Mex I'm a true Mexicana if I eat it. I close my eyes. I squinch my face, but I slowly take a bite. It's crunchy, but it's also very salty. It tastes like lime. Yum, I say. I'm not lying either. It's delicioso. With our stomachs full of food, we head back to Maria's and drift off to sleep in one giant room on different cots. I feel electric and still a little nervous. I'm so happy to be in Mexico, but I also wish that I wake up tomorrow fluent in Spanish. Before I shut my eyes, I whisper, thank you, mom, for the vacation. Nick whispers, yeah, mom, I think I, think I spot a smile on his face. You're welcome, Nino's mom replies with an even bigger smile.